So in today's video, we're going to begin a discussion of center of gravity. So I'm going to give you a sort of intuitive example. Um, let's say you've got a ruler, looks something like this. Let's say the mass of this is, I don't know, two kilograms. Now, if, say, you want to balance this with your finger, you already know where you would put your finger. You'd put it right in the middle. So right here. If you put it anywhere else, the ruler's just going to fall, right? So you put it right in the middle. Why do you put it right in the middle? Or why, rather, do you put your finger right in the middle? Well, that's because the center of gravity of this ruler is right here. Okay. So you can kind of envision the center of gravity as a point in which all the mass of the ruler is contained. This doesn't mean that literally all the mass in the ruler is found at this point, and you know that's not true because over here there's mass and over here there's mass. What that means is that if you support this point, that's the same as supporting the entire ruler. Now, interestingly, if you apply a force to the center of gravity, this point right here, the entire ruler will accelerate as if you had applied a force um, to the whole thing. So let me give you a quick example. Let's say I apply a 10 Newton force, right where the center of gravity is. I can find the acceleration using Newton's laws. I know that acceleration is equal to force over mass. So this is 10 over 2 which is equal to 5 meters over a second squared. Okay. Now, what if I apply a force, let's say, right here? All right. Okay. So if I apply a force other, to where, other than where the center of gravity is, the ruler will actually turn in this direction around the center of gravity. So it will rotate around the center of gravity. And we're going to talk about this in more detail when we discuss torque. Um, but it's just good to keep that in mind as we move forward in this lesson. So an important question I want to ask you guys is where is the center of gravity? Well, sort of intuitively for a ruler, um, you can say that the center of gravity is at the geometric mean, which basically means it's right in the middle of the ruler. Um, and that's you know, pretty obvious, like if you're trying to balance a pen using your finger, you usually put your finger at the middle of the pen, not, you know, to one side of the pen. Okay, so what about for objects that are not symmetrical? I'll give you a couple examples. If I have a cone, so that would look something like this. Okay, so we see there's like more mass at the bottom of the cone than at the top. So the center of gravity is lower. In this case, it's like over here. And it's actually, if this is h, if this is the height of the cone, the center of gravity is one-fourth of the way up from the bottom of the cone. And this would only be true if the, den if the cone had a constant density, meaning that it's made up of the same material throughout the cone. Let me give you another example where it's not at a constant density. So let's say I've got, I don't know, like a brick, and half the brick is made up of lead. So this half is lead, symbol for lead is PB. And let's say the other half is made up of foam, it's like light, fluffy foam. It would make sense for the center of gravity to be pulled to the left, so somewhere maybe over here. And that's because this object doesn't have a constant density, so the center of gravity is going to be towards a heavier end. Okay, so just for some quick formal definition, center of gravity is the point located at the object's average position of weight. Okay, so it's important to um, realize that the center of gravity of an object actually doesn't have to be in a place where there's any mass. For example, if I have a donut, so here's my donut. Say so that's the nice frosting. The center of gravity of a donut is at the geometric mean of the donut, given that this the donut um, has a constant density throughout, and the geometric mean is actually 
in the middle of the donut, so here's its center of gravity, and there's no mass there, that's just air, right? So another instance where the center of gravity may be located where no actual material exists is in the case of a table. Um, we see in this table that the center of gravity is here underneath the table where no material is present. Um, so the key here is that the center of gravity is just the average position of weight for the object, which doesn't actually have to be where the material actually is. So it's important to talk about the difference between center of gravity and center of mass. Um, on the next slide, I have definition of center of mass as the average position of all the particles of mass in an object. Recall that center of gravity is the average position of the weight of the object. So the difference is weight versus mass. Okay, given that gravity exerts the same force throughout an object, then center of mass and center of gravity are essentially the same. Now, if gravity exerts a different force in different places in the object, then center of gravity and center of mass are different. So, in most situations on Earth, center of mass and center of gravity are the same. But let me give you an example where it's not. Okay, so let's talk about the Empire State Building. So here it is, Empire State Building. Okay. Um, so center of mass would be, you know, maybe somewhere halfway between, let's call that center of mass. So center of mass is just the average position of the mass. Now, center of gravity is actually going to be slightly below the center of mass. And this is because gravity pulls... Um, more strongly on the lower floors of the Empire State Building than on the higher floors of the Empire State Building. So there's such a difference in altitude if, as you go up the Empire State Building that gravity actually has different effects on the Empire State Building. Okay, so one more example before we wrap up. Alright, so let's say I have this guy and he's a high jumper. So center of gravity is usually right around your stomach area just below. Okay, so that's the center of gravity. Now we know that to cause him to accelerate, you have to apply a force right onto a center of gravity. So right there. Okay, so we know, or you might have seen in high jumping, that when the person jumps over the bar, they normally kind of have their back arched over the bar. So this looks like their legs, and then that's the guy's head. And he's, you know, doing a very good job. And this arcing makes their center of gravity lower than it normally is. So it actually, their center of gravity is actually just below the bar. Like, just right here is their center of gravity. So this is an instance where the center of gravity actually isn't where any physical material is present. Um, and that's just because when you arc your body like that, the average position of your weight is shifted and it's actually lower than if you just were standing like he was originally, okay? So what this does is that his center of gravity is lower, so you have to, he only has to apply less of a force to obtain this height. Remember that the force actually acts on the center of gravity. Then if he had jumped over the bar in this position. So we now see a real life application um, for center of gravity. And in the next video, we're going to talk about stability and toppling, and then we'll move on to torque.